This picturesque terrain is the abode of the Monpas, which is spread from snow-peaked mountains of Tawang region to Dirang and Kalaktang area of Arnacha Pradesh. Oh. The state of Arnacha Pradesh is situated on the northeast extremity of the Indian subcontinent, where India shares its border with Myanmar, Bhutan, China and Tibet. Tawang is a border district and Tibet is on its north. Tawang is a very beautiful place. The whole Monpa land is full of beautiful and rare varieties of rhododendron flowers. The altitude of Tawang is 3,410 meters. Dirang and Kalaktang have an altitude of 1,497 meters and 1,153 meters respectively. A 5,020 meter high mountain peak, Sela, separates Tawang area from the other two Monpa areas, Dirang and Kalaktang. The geographical separation made the Monpas develop some new traits to adjust themselves with ecology and environment of their habitation. And thus, they were known as three different groups, Tawang Monpa, Dirang Monpa and Kalaktan Monpa. Though some linguistic variations are present among the three groups, but culturally the groups possess many common characteristics and they are united by Buddhism of Tibetan kind. Tibetan used to address the inhabitants of the region south to Tibet as Monpa. In Tibetan dialect, Mon and Pa signify the man of the lower country and means those people living in the lower region of mountain. The Monpa is a major Buddhist tribe of Arunachal Pradesh with a population of about 50,000. The Monpa, with its distinct physical and cultural characteristics, preserving a unique facet of tribal legacy of our human society. Buddha's teachings have molded their psyche, distilled into lifestyle, gentle, friendly and courteous. They are non-violent, a tribute to their well-set social system and values, which also makes them very artistic and industrious. The settlements of Monpas are permanent in nature. The villages are situated on the slope of the hills, while some are extended along the side of a stream. With variations of altitudes of villages, the nature of cultivation and crop varies. 
In the high areas of Tawang, they grow mainly barley, wheat and off late potatoes. In the lower area of Kalaktang and Dirang, they grow rice with maize. Most of the arable land is under permanent tillage, though they also practice jhum. But at present, most of the jhum fields are converted into fruit gardens in Dirang area. The Dirang area is rich in the production of apple. The villages are big and prosperous. The household in the village varies from 30 to 200 and so. All the regularities and irregularities prevailing among the Monpas are looked after by the ancient institution Mangma or Magzom, the village council, which has a supreme authority of the village. The significant feature of a Monpa village are presence of fun, prayer flag, in the entrance and on the top of a house. Rotating prayer cylinders, Mane, is a must for every village. The village monastery or Gompa is usually situated at the hilltop. The Monpa houses are almost same in the three areas. They build mainly double-storied houses with timber and stones. Generally, the houses are elongated and has two to four rooms in the upper floor. The hearth, Modrang, is generally situated in the middle of the house. The household activities are centered around the hearth. Among the Monpas, nuclear family constitutes of married couples and their unmarried children. A girl is said to be an asset as she brings a considerable amount of bright price. The bright price consisting of yak, cow or airy clothes. The girl who is expert in household work like carpet making and knitting sweaters besides her beauty gets more demand in the marriage field. The girl's consent is equally important as the parent's consent. Monogamy is the common norm in marriage. However, polygamy and polyandry is permitted. Each household of the Monpas keep a special place in the house for performing daily worship to Lord Buddha. The family chapel, Chosam, is situated at the rear end of the house. They are religious. All the three groups of Monpas are united by the bond of Buddhist religion since the establishment of Tawang Monastery in the 17th century. In the later part of the 17th century, the 5th Dalai Lama of Tibet issued a mandate to the villagers of Tawang region to help Mira Lama to build a monastery there. The construction of the monastery was completed with the help of the Monpas of Tawang and it now stands on the spur of a hill, about 10,000 feet above sea level. The Tawang Monastery is the fountainhead of the spiritual life of the Jalukpa followers, a special sect of the Tibetan Buddhism, and is the pivot of Monpa life and ethos. The Tawang Monastery has treasured Monpa art in the form of handicraft items, textiles, furnitures, murals, carpets and sculptures. The giant prayer wheel near the entrance of the monastery is run by water, which reflects the religious and industrious nature of the Monpas. This hut-like structure is called Kakaling, main entrance to the temple complex. The ceiling of the Kakaling is richly decorated with various colors and designs. There are murals on all walls of the Kakaling. Among the murals of the southern wall, 
the ninth are from the southwestern corner, is of some local significance. It is that of Ning Mei Chan, who according to the old religion, is the guardian deity of Tawang. In the pre-Buddhist days, Monpas believed in many deities or spirits, which are not totally abundant in the present time. Ning Mei Chan has been incorporated in the local Buddhist pantheon and is worshipped in the Buddhist style without animal sacrifice. The old religion of the Monpa is called Bon and the priest is known as Bonpa. He practices the art of the traditional faith and belief to get benevolent effect. Their spirit and deities are worshipped by mantras even today. Rows of prayer wheel are set in niches all along the outer walls of the eastern and northern side of the monastery. The entrance of the temple by the prayer hall is by a wide festival, the walls of which are decorated with colorful murals. They are the four guardian deities of Tawang. The mural on the eastern wall is called Sibi Kolo, the Wheel of Life, illustrating the six realms in which man can be reborn. In Monpa society, death has special significance. Though the common method of disposal of body is cremation or burial, but they also cut the body into 108 pieces and throw it to the river to feed the aquatic creatures for physical emancipation of the dead from material body to ensure good rebirth. There's a belief that if a tanka painting is offered at Gompa in the name of the deceased person, the departed soul will rest in peace until it takes rebirth. Moreover, the image of Tanka helps to concentrate the mind on a particular deity. The Tanka is made by painting on a piece of cloth, tightly fitted to a wooden frame. A number of colors are needed for painting a tanka. The prescribed colors of tanka is traditionally followed by painters. It is believed that the painters were informed by God through dreams about the colored soils for tanka. But nowadays, paints are being purchased from the market. The Monpa society is very much rich in traditional songs and dances. The popular performances are Aji Lamu, Yak and Deer dances, each of which depict some legendary stories and events. This is Aji Lamu dance. One of the most prominent traditional dances, this dance drama is performed during the Losar festival. There are five characters of mythological origin in this dance. The Yak dance is one of the famous dances of the Buddhist tribes of Arunachal Pradesh. The masked dancers represent the members of a family who are said to have discovered the Yak with the help of a magical bird many hundreds of years ago. The discovery of the yak solved the family's internal property disputes and provided a permanent source of wealth and prosperity to the entire community.
This is another form of the Ajilamu dance practiced by the villagers of the Kalaktang area. The monastic dances are performed by the lamas and in the monastery only. They perform in gorgeous dresses and decorated headgears. The religious dances are performed during the festivals, mainly during the Torgya festival celebrated in the Tawang Monastery. They are rich in the treasure of colorful mask dance. There are a number of masks to be used in the dances. The masks are generally carved out of a piece of wood. It is believed that the moment the dancer puts the mask on, they start feeling some sort of emotion of the nature of the mask. His personality undergoes a metamorphosis. A powerful mask customarily throws a divine sanctity on the person who puts it. The Mongpas are good artists and designers. They make beautiful idols of clay. There are many clay idols in the Tawang Monastery properly painted. A colossal, richly gilded Buddha occupies the middle of the northern side of the assembly hall, Tukhang. It is seated on a platform and its body rising up terminates in a huge head above the first floor. It is the largest image of the monastery and about 26 feet high. The library, Parkhang, is housed in a big hall which covers the entire first floor of this building. The sacred books are kept on various racks. The library has more than 700 Buddhist scriptures, of which eight large volumes of Getompa is its prized possession. The Lama Sari at the Tawang Monastery has the capacity for housing 500 Lamas. It is a part of the Monpa tradition to send the second son for Buzim Burma, that is, to the monastery to be a Lama, to serve the religion and the society. The 
Mamta women are experts in their looms, especially in carpet making. Whenever they remain free, they engage themselves. Monpas are proud of the homemade carpets. The carpets are well designed and their favorite design is the dragon. A carpet may be designed with the figure of an imaginary bird or a bird facing a dragon. Or a snow lion or dragon facing each other. The Monpas make a special type of carpet of a llama and trees, bird and mountain. A legend is associated with this variety. Such types of carpets are known as misering. There is a rare type of carpet which is designed to use on horseback. This carpet has two wings and it looks like a butterfly. It is called Gaiga Maktan. The material required in carpet making are coloured woolen yarn, wool, cotton twisted yarn, cotton thread and wool and loom with other tools and implements. Wool is prepared locally out of the hair of goats, the hair monag, are cut off by a sharp knife, washed and then spinned, if necessary applied indigenous or synthetic dyes. Almost every Monpa knows how to weave a carpet. Arunachar Pradesh government is encouraging people by setting up craft centers for manufacturing handicraft items. In the Sangti village of Dirang, the government has set up a sheep breeding farm for the benefit of the people. The central government has also established a national research on yak in Dirang, whereby they have invented a new process of extracting wool out of yak hair for weaving carpets. Commercial enterprises to sell and produce their handicraft products, especially carpets, is playing a significant role in strengthening their economy. Traditionally, the economy of the people, by and large, is regulated by agriculture. The traditional economic pattern has gradually been moving towards a new arena of development. The Monpas are marching towards the path of development in the field of education, 
economic progress and political participation. Education has spread over the whole Monpa area rapidly. The Monpas realize the significance of education and send their children to school. The wind of modernization do gradually influence their society, yet they are still maintaining their traditional way of life, cultural identity and behavioral forms. Though the Monpas follow the Tibetan brand of Buddhism, but they are quite distinct from the Tibetans, both in the nature of the country they inhabit, their customs, language, dress and method of living. They were never under the Tibetans. The language spoken by the Monpas is distinct from the Tibetan, though it does contain a good number of Tibetan words. The Monpas remain resolute followers of their tradition and culture, a shining gem reflecting tribal wisdom, an important facet of human legacy. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my